Hare Krishna, dear devotees, then with Pranam, Jai Shri Prabhupada, please accept my humble obeisances. So, as promised yesterday, I will tell you a very short, quick story about this uh, wonderful dish, this dessert that I shared picture on the group. Uh, you can see the picture uh, on the screen also. So, these little Peda like desserts, what is their story, what is their name, how are they linked to Krishna consciousness. Uh, somebody guessed uh, Mathura ke Pede. Yes, they do look like uh, Pedas, but uh, they're not and uh, they taste very different actually. Um, so before I tell you the name of this dish, <clears throat> uh, this is a Prabhupada story. So uh, let's hear from the very beginning. So as you know that when Prabhupada came to USA and um, um, various uh, fortunate souls came in contact with him, he started teaching them various aspects of Krishna consciousness. He basically taught them the whole culture, the whole version of culture um, from the ground upwards, right? Uh, they did not know anything practically and Prabhupada taught them everything. Uh, and Prabhupada was such a <clears throat> talented, skilled um, person, uh, Saksham at everything, that he taught them uh, the very basics of, uh, very basics to very advanced of almost all type of talents, whether it is music, he taught them how to play Mridanga, how to play Karthals, how to play harmonium. He taught them how to uh, tie a dhoti, how to put a thilak on. The ladies, he taught them how to put sari um, and cooking. He taught them various, various types of uh, dishes, how to cook for Krishna's pleasure. Uh, whether it's, um, and they were not, they were not simple things. Yes, he taught them simple things like rice and dal and roti and sabzi, but also uh, more uh, delicacies, like even some uh, Bengali desserts. Uh, somebody guessed sandesh. Yes, he even taught them how to make sandesh. And uh, he taught them how to make kachoris and samosas. Um, and so many different things you can read in the Lilamrit or other uh, short uh, versions of Lilamrit available. Um, and um, taught them, you know, um, when to get up, when to sleep, how to eat, how to eat with your hands, sit on the floor. Uh, so many things, practically all kind of day-to-day um, um, -day, uh, lessons of um, a cultured uh, living, a Vaishnava's culture, uh, and how to serve the Lord with various talents, right? Um, he taught them Sanskrit verses, various prayers, deity worship, various artis to offer. But, um, you know, Krishna consciousness or is has all, many times referred to as um, kitchen cuisine, right? Kitchen uh, culture or kitchen religion. What does that mean, kitchen religion? Because we try to satisfy uh, uh, not the Lord, but mostly try to purify ourselves by pleasing the Lord. So we cook for Him, and in this way, we purify ourselves. We purify ourselves by cooking, first of all, then by offering it to the Lord in a loving gesture, and uh, then by uh, honoring that prashadam, honoring that bhoga and accepting it. Uh, that's how we purify ourselves. So one of the dishes that Prabhupada taught the disciples was called, uh, well, I'll tell you what it was called, but it was made from very basic three ingredients. This was the dessert. He taught, he, because there are used, a lot of people used to come to the temple uh, or to that little mark, the storefront um, uh, where Prabhupada uh, was staying, a lot of people used to come and the disciples wanted to serve them something sweet. So Prabhupada told them to bring just three basic ingredients from the market and I will show you how to make a very nice dessert from that. And the ingredients were uh, just the milk powder, cream and um, sugar, uh, granulated sugar. So just bring me these three ingredients and I will show you how to make a little sweet dish. And so by making a dough from those three ingredients he, and then rolling them into balls, he made this little dessert, this, this sweet dish. 
So one day, one Mataji, Prabhupada's disciple, she used those three ingredients and decided to make these for Prabhupada and to see if they have come out uh, right or not, if she's um, okay to start making these for other people or not. So she made a batch of these uh, and uh, served uh, Prabhupada. And she said, Prabhupada, can you please try and see if these have come out right, if they taste um, okay to you? So Prabhupada, before taking a bite of these, uh, he said, you know, uh, everything in Krishna consciousness is simply wonderful. Everything, whether it is our um, uh, scriptures, whether it is our um, um, philosophy, whether it is deity worship, whether it is the kirtan, the chanting of the holy names, uh, everything is simply wonderful. And then our prashad definitely is simply wonderful. So I'm sure that these little dessert balls that you have made must also be simply wonderful. So, and then he took a bite and he said, uh, yes, you know, it's exactly like I predicted. These are simply wonderful. And so, uh, in this way, the name of this dish was, was called Simply Wonderful. So, the, de the devotees, the disciples started calling this dish Simply Wonderful. So, they did taste Simply Wonderful. So since then, this was called Simply Wonderful. Now, uh, they started making this every time uh, uh, every time for um, bhoga. And especially for preaching, whenever uh, new, new people would come, they'll be served these Simply Wonderfuls. Now, Prabhupada, you know, as we know, was you know, very, very keen on preaching and very uh, sharp at noticing uh, which people will be ripe for giving some knowledge, you know, because you have to identify the jivas that are ready to accept the knowledge. So he came up with a strategy. So, you know, nowadays it's different. Nowadays, when you go to a temple, most of the people are already familiar with Krishna consciousness, the basic philosophy. We are not the body, we are the soul. Uh, they're aware of the knowledge of Bhagavad Gita and everything. But uh, in those days, when everything was so new, uh, there were very few handful of people, only Prabhupada's disciples that knew the knowledge and the rest of the people that would come to the temple did not know anything, right? So imagine if in a temple hall, there are 100 people, only four or five have the knowledge and the rest you rest don't know anything. And so you have to identify out of those people who may be uh, ripe or who may be uh, submissive enough to listen to the further knowledge, who will be, who is interested and who has just come for some dancing and feasting and who has come for some more enlightenment. So you had to identify those souls, right? So Prabhupada came up with this strategy. He said, you know, when you serve prashadam, don't uh, give more than one simply wonderful at a time. Just give, just put one in the plate. So just say plate banai, you give rest of the food. And then for dessert, just put one simply wonderful. Don't put more than one. Okay. And when somebody after prashadam comes to you asking for more simply wonderful, <clears throat> or when you go around the room asking for more, and somebody wants more simply wonderful, then that person is ready to hear more. And that person you preach. Okay. So everybody decided to follow this strategy. So one day, uh, same thing happened. The temple was pretty full. Everybody was being served prashadam and devotees were just putting one uh, simply wonderful on everybody's plate. Even if somebody asked for two, we'll say, you know, <clears throat> Prabhuji, we just keep one at a time for now. If you want more, please come back. So in this way, only one was given. Now there was this one devotee or one soul in the temple who was eating his prashadam, honoring the prashadam. And he had kept, uh, just as is the custom, to he had kept his simply wonderful on side of the plate to enjoy later. He said, I'll eat the last one. The rest of the food will eat. So he ate the whole food. He finished the whole plate. And then he had that simply wonderful. As soon as he had it, he was completely overjoyed. Wow, what is this? I've tasted. This is so amazing. Huh? I want more. So uh, he asked one of the devotees who was serving, uh, Prabhuji, can I have one more of that round ball that you gave me before? Um, I really liked it. Can, I, can you serve me more? So as soon as the devotee heard this, 
they already had instructions from Prabhupada that, you know, if somebody asks for more, start preaching. So uh, when this devotee heard, he called a couple other disciples and they brought a full plate, a pura pura se plate bharke with many simply wonderfuls on it. And they brought it to, the, to, to that devotee, uh, the one who was asking. And they said, uh, Prabhuji, please come to the side. Let's go somewhere uh, more uh, secluded and uh, let's talk and, um, and you can have more Simply Wonderfuls. So what they did was they gave him one Simply Wonderful and they will teach him with every time they'll teach him a point from our Krishna conscious philosophy. So Prabhuji, do you know that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead? And here you go. And they gave him one Simply Wonderful to eat. As he was eating, they'll give another point of philosophy. Did you know that we are also spiritual entities, part and parcel of Krishna, that we are servants of the Lord? And then they give him another, simply wonderful. Did you know that uh, we are separated from Krishna because of our false ego and enviousness and that the goal of our life is to go back to the Lord? And they give another, simply wonderful. Did you know that we are stuck in this material world and we suffer all these miseries of birth, death, old age and disease here? Uh, and this is for our reformation so that we have hankering to go back to the Lord. Give him another Simply Wonderful. In this way, they kept preaching one point at a time and kept giving him one Simply Wonderful. So in the end, this devotee and the devotee was mesmerized. One, by the taste of Simply Wonderfuls and two, by all this philosophy, the knowledge that he was hearing, which was completely new to him and um, made complete sense. So all the uh, all his questions were getting answered one after another and in such a tasteful manner. And these devotees were so loving, so kind. They were feeding him one after one, these little balls of uh, goodness that were just simply wonderful. And uh, in this way, he ate 40 simply wonderfuls. Now, this is a true story. And this particular devotee that was eating and getting all this knowledge, this is a very prominent uh, member of our GBC, actually. He's a very prominent uh, Guru Varga currently in his con. Um, he will remain unnamed, but I will just tell you the uh, story about it. Uh, so then this way, he ate 40 Simply Wonderfuls. And then he stopped and he said, Prabhuji, I'm full. Uh, I think I should go back. So, uh, but he was feeling very sleepy because it was late in the night now. And uh, he was a college student at that time. His uh, dormitory where he used to live was a little bit away. So he had driven there. So he didn't feel like driving back to his college. So he thought, okay, I'll just sleep here in the temple. So he just slept there on the floor. <clears throat> Next morning, um, somebody woke him up early in the morning, like about 4, 4.30. Uh, that was some of the devotees. They woke him up and they said, oh, Prabhuji, you fell asleep here. Would you like to join us? We are just starting uh, Lord's Arti, the worship program. Um, so he woke up. They gave him some clothes to wear and just go take a shower quickly and come back and join us in the program. So he thought, okay, I'll just join. I'll just see what's going on. And uh, these people are so nice. So he went and took a shower, changed his clothes, came back for Arti. And in this way, he did the full Arti program in the morning. He danced with them, chanted with them, the Mangal Arti, the Narsing Arti, Tulsi Arti, Shikshashtakam prayers, 10 offenses, <clears throat> Guru Puja. He did all of that. And then um, he thought, okay, I should go now. He started to leave. But then... The devotees uh, called him again. They said, no, don't leave just yet. You know, um, why don't you <clears throat> uh, chant with us? Because chanting is really purifying. Remember, we were telling you various aspects of our philosophy. And one of the uh, aspects is that one should chant the holy names of the Lord um, with sincerity. And that will purify us. <clears throat> so please uh, try to chant with us. So he thought, okay, uh, what's the harm? I can, um, I can just do some chanting with them. So he uh, sat there and started chanting with them. So in this way, he chanted for almost one, one and a half hour. And then he started to leave. But then they said, you know, um, in another hour, uh, the breakfast will be served. And it is very, very um, <clears throat> amazing, wonderful preparations that have been made today. And there are some more Simply Wonderfuls, if you would like. So, But before that, we have Bhagavatam class. Would you like to hear the class and just shave, stay for the morning, pro, for the breakfast? So he thought, okay, I'll just stay for the uh, Bhagavatam class and the breakfast. 
their their food is very very nice anyways so he stayed for the bhagavatam class he did not really understand anything but he sat through it then came the time for the breakfast and he had had his breakfast again in the breakfast he got one simply wonderful on his plate just like everybody else got one only one simply wonderful as was propad's instruction so then he sat down and finished his breakfast and in the end he ate that one simply wonderful now after eating this he was again you know mesmerized wow this is so tasty i wish i could have more so he asked one of the devotees uh, prabhu ji can i have more of those sweet balls so when he was given uh, more again the devotees brought out a full plate of simply wonderfuls and they took him to the side let's let's chit chat a little bit more let's sit on the side and you can have more simply wonderfuls so they uh, all sat on the side and again the preaching started and uh, he started eating and they started giving him more points of uh, from bhagavad gita uh, they started teaching him about how the death is the final examination how at the time of death you should remember lord and then give him one simply wonderful then when he eats they tell him another point and so uh the only way to remember lord at that end moment at the time of death is by remembering him constantly through the life eat another simply wonderful he eat and then they'll say uh and uh, chanting is the most powerful way of remembering the lord through our throughout our lives it is a type of meditation it's called mantra meditation and by chanting with your tongue and using your beads and focusing your mind you're purifying your senses and you are in direct communion with the lord here you go another simply wonderful in this way they kept giving him more and more points of bhagavad gita teachings and krishna consciousness and kept feeding him more and more simply wonderfuls and guess how many simply wonderfuls he ate this time so this time he again ate 40 more simply wonderfuls remember last night he ate 40 and this time again he ate 40 more of those simply wonderfuls and this time uh once he was done eating uh he got up and he uh, thanked everybody and he is really full and he said i cannot simply eat any more uh, uh food so i will take your uh, blessings and leave and he started to leave he started driving back to his college as he was driving back he um was thinking you know these people are so nice i'm so nicely full and feel so satisfied and nourished and so much loved and they were so kind and they taught me all these different points from their scriptures and these um everything that they said made so much sense how come i did not know about this so far how come i'm wasting so much time they said human form of life is very very um precious and it's very rarely achieved and we should not waste even a single moment of this human form of life and i'm wasting my time and he felt such a distaste coming to him when he thought of the place where he was going his college mates his friends you know they are such materialistic people um they are after money and women and uh, sometimes they can be unkind and they can be greedy and they can be lusty and they have so many bad habits and these people were so clean and so kind and so loving and so knowledgeable so pure their purity touched his heart so he thought i don't want to go where i'm going i want to go back to them so he turned his car around and went back to the temple you know like krishna says that my temple uh, prabhupad says my temples are like uh, the um spiritual world basically the temples are uh, basically the expansions from the spiritual world uh, expansions of vrindavan so and krishna says in bhagavad gita that uh, my spiritual abode is a place where once gone you cannot come back right uh yad gatvana nivartante tad dhama parma mama so that's what happened to that devoti he could not go back from there he went back to the temple and he um uh joined the devotees and started spending more time with them and in in time he once he was um he had spent some years in krishna consciousness he was so um he surrendered his life to the lord completely uh he took initiation from prabhupad became a very uh, loving disciple of prabhupad and went on to be- become a very senior um uh, spiritual master in uh, iskon and this was just from the uh, 
from it's just all started from eating these simply wonderfuls so this was the story about simply wonderfuls uh, they are simply wonderfuls we tried the recipe and it's very simple very easy uh, but just like everything in krishna consciousness is simply wonderful um, we just have to try uh, everything is very basic everything is very a uh, natural as compared to the unnatural more complicated things of this world uh, everything in krishna consciousness is very simple and straightforward and natural so please try these um, but i hope you enjoyed the story and so the dish is called simply wonderful and uh, you can look up the recipe it's freely available online hari krishna thank you for hearing <laughs>